Good night, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, right now it's like 9.30. Today was a really, really strange day. A little while ago, I got back from jogging, and uh, it's the first time I heard uh, the trains were, train alarms were going off, you know, squealing, making noise the whole time. Uh, cop cars going by nonstop, ambulances chasing people. I, it's so strange. The Lord moved, to the, moved, moved me to this house uh, uh, a few months before I actually told y'all, and a few months after I actually just gave my all to the Lord. And this stuff started happening. It's kind of funny. He moved me next to some train tracks. And now when I hear the train tracks, a normal night, once a night, or once every two days, it reminds me of the, it's kind of like he moved me to, moved me by some train tracks to, re, to remind me that I'd be here for the train taking off, you see. But today, I went outside to go for a uh, jog, and people, it was chaotic. It was train after train after train, just blowing, blowing horns, and ambulances, cars getting hit. And I was like, Lord, is it, you trying to show me something right here? And the, the, the bells are going off, and... But this is all after what happened last night. Last night I had the worst horrible dream that I've ever had in my life. I actually thought I was in hell. Kind of realized when I got up that I wasn't, but I thought I was in hell. It was horrible. You just don't. But it wasn't hell. It was, it was the earth during tribulation, people. But at first when I was there, I wasn't realizing what was going on. I thought I was in hell. And I was just crying almost half the time. Uh, then when I wake up this morning to hear that the government run by the Antichrist Obama and his minions you know because they pit these people in certain locations in the government they pit them everywhere you don't think them uh, the supreme justices in there are just there because they're good you can tell half of them are, are, are lesbian and another half are just commies up and just waiting for their role to do whatever they got to do and they got one or two that are easily paid off by the government you start in your life one time no, they'll, they'll give in well, last night, well, I'll just tell you the dream, and then I will uh, commentate after, but uh, there's something that's definitely changed, people, and uh, I think the tribulation is about to begin for, for, for sure, and, you know, I thought I had a lot more time for this, for the tribulation to begin, I'm probably sure you guys did too, but uh, this week, just this week alone, it, it seems like stuff has sped up 100 miles an hour. And, okay, well, let me start with this dream. And I, and once again, I, I can't get this dream justice. No, I'm going to summarize certain things. I didn't even want to write this dream down. I waited all day long. I forgot a bunch of things because I didn't want to write it down. For a second, I thought, man, I, I thought it was, it was, I was getting condemned or something before the Lord revealed to me. It was that it's, it was, it's going to be like for me to show y'all what it's going to be like and be, be to be left in the Great Tribulation. And that's how sad and how bad this was, but. I'll try to detail some of the things I saw, but but it's a, such a it'll be such a chaotic and a drunken thing, and it will be flip like the devil likes to flip upside things down, like like he likes to imitate God with his with his uh, false trinity and his unholy ghost that he tries the Kundalini ghost he people he tries to mimic God. We need to realize this. Okay, so it starts off with me. I'm in this uh, building house. I'm not sure what it is and. And I look across the street and everything's destroyed. Everything. I see water, fire. I mean, I just, something happened, people. And I don't know if it was, uh, maybe a mixture, mixture of everything. Maybe it was uh, earthquakes, atomic bombs. I'm not sure, but it, something happened to cause this to come into effect. Okay. So, so it starts off with me in a building and didn't know where anyone was at because I looked around and I didn't hardly see anybody. Um... Uh, like I said, I saw some great event just took place, and uh, everything was turned on its head. Me and this guy, don't know who the guy was, I, I don't, he wasn't Christ, he was just like a regular guy. Uh, we chose this building to be our home. It's kind of like we were trying to survive in the tribulation, but we always went into it very carefully. When we go into this building, we walk in as if there were killers in there. Uh, we, we like kind of held each other like our arms like protecting each other and we walked in like kind of like we were firefighters like going in and we were not not knowing what we we're going to find we also were worried about toxins what chemicals were in the building as we went in there to sleep we uh we worried about nuclear fallout guys we worried about we worried about wild beasts we worried about lions i was so afraid in there that a lion would come around the corner and attack me could you imagine 
once once this stuff starts to kick off, how many lions and bears and stuff are going to be let out of their cages to survive? Yeah, they don't care about the humans, but be, you can be dang sure they're going to let the animals out. Okay, then, uh, so yeah, so we, we were worried about the wild beasts as well, and, uh, we did, we did not find rest, even in our home, there was no rest. That was made clear. We did not want to even be in the home. It was too dangerous. We, we, uh, I remember going outside in the dream, guys, and as I was trying to walk, and he, I was like, no, don't. And I mean, I walked in the wood, and the wood of the houses were all rotted, and, and the whole house, basically half of the house fell down, and everything was falling apart. You had to always watch carefully where you walked, and uh, everything was crumbling. You know, wood didn't last. Houses were come crumbling. So you put your stuff together, you see something's going on here. Something's causing this wood to crumble under your feet. So if I were to research that, I'd maybe tell me something. People were walking on this. Guys, people were walking up and down. If you can imagine the scene at 911 on September uh, 11th. 9-11 whenever you saw people with the, all the like smoke the stuff on their faces as they were bleeding and walked it in like all dazed and confused and horrified as they watched the bodies jump to the to the to their death this is what everybody kind of looked like walking the streets but there was no building that just fell it was just a bunch of other stuff yes i saw just people walking like like zombies kind of like just like it was like i know what was going on uh i don't i don't remember having any money Everyone, it's, check this out, guys. Everyone was kind of bartering, okay? And the thing that, for some reason, I don't know why, but some guy, there, my friend that was there, he gave, he put in my pocket, his bartering tool was like, I guess drugs or pills or something. I'm not sure. What he, I didn't really look at it or nothing like that, but he, he had put something in my pocket or something. It's kind of bartering tools, but I think, I think they bartered with drugs. Uh, I remember once uh, being sent to this house of thugs, and, uh, and they, they check my pocket and all that. Because I also, I guess, like, you have to pay them a certain amount of, uh, uh, I owed them for some reason a certain amount of, uh, of that out of my pocket. Um, so they, then they took those portions out of my pocket. Once I walked the street and I saw, I walked the street, guys, and I saw a famous actor. And I, I really wish I would remember his name. So, and to see if he's still living or if he's actually passed on. But I saw a real famous actor, and I talked to him. He seemed nice, but he was like in a hurry to get somewhere. And I told him he was a good actor and all that kind of stuff. But I really did see him. I was so crazy. Uh, if I remember who he is, I'd wonder if he's dead or not, or if he's still alive. Uh, yeah, then he, uh, so he will thank me and walk away. A few times in this dream, me and my roommate had to uh, clear out this house. Because we keep going back to this house, like the gas mask house, and uh, clear it out and watch for beasts. We do this so many times in this dream. Like, because we didn't want to die going into our own home. This is how bad this was. He started talking about, you know, he was in the, he's a country music singer. I'm like, oh, really? I, country, I sing country music. And I was like, you know, kind of excited about that for a second. Maybe, maybe singing together at a concert or something. But then uh, when one day we, were, we weren't able to get into our house. Uh, and we couldn't open the door. He said, I believe that uh, we had to, to scan. We had to, like, scan something every single night. Or we couldn't, uh, or they would lock the house up on us. They'd clear us out. So we had been gone for a couple of days. Uh, we just couldn't make it to the house. So much chaos was going on. But when we went, uh, we went there, we couldn't open the door. They had they had locked us out of the building. But it was something weird, and he couldn't do it. Everybody couldn't do it. But when I did it, though, I opened the door. And for me, it, it opened right up. But it was cleared out. Um, for some reason, I was the only one that could open the door. And then, uh, but we didn't go in, though, for some reason. We did not go in. Uh, then we turn around and we started to walk. Then we started to uh, become very aware. Then I saw. Then I started to become very aware in this dream that something was seriously wrong. Everyone was walking around drunk and like, uh, it's guys. It was like the Holy Ghost had left. That's exactly what this is. The Holy Ghost was no more there. It was left. These people were on their own. They all walked around confused, drunken. Everything was just out of order, turned upside down. It was, it was literally hell on earth. And I started to become really, really sad. And I did not want to be there anymore. Uh, as, as me and my roommate one time were walking down these streets, guys, uh, something happened. And I, and I told my roommate that I loved him. We were all joking around. I said, you know, I love you, man, or something like that. And joke around him. And he, with a smile, and all of a sudden, something crazy happened. Like... He started to shake his head demonically at me, and then uh, then he like 
he like turns around in a very demonic way. He like he hated what I had told him, and he and he started to walk away. But as he walked away, he uh, it's kind of like if you walking away all like a demon demon walk away all crazy like, and somebody pressed like a slow fast forward on the D, on the uh, whatever the CD player or whatever or or VCR or whatever. You kind of all creepily walk away fast. If you, if you press fast forward, that's what he looked like walking away. He just ran from me in that way, creepily, demonically, uh, just because I told him I loved him. And then, um, um, it, yeah, so it was a very demonic walk. You know, it was like it was a demonic walk on fast forward. I got really, really nervous and confused, and I was, uh, and then, uh, okay, then again, the scene, everybody's walking the streets. There's like zombie type people, guys. Um, it's so, it's just hell on earth, guys. And I, then I looked around, I'm like, oh, I, I look like, I think in my head, I didn't ask the question yet, but I was like, in my head, I was like, is this hell? Like, I don't see fire, like, like in hell. Where this is like, this is like a regular street, but it, but it was hell. It's like, it's like hell was brought up to our streets and to our world. That's what it felt like. And so my spirit started to shake, you know, and I became really confused and scared and, uh, uh, and then this one lady, guys, this one lady, after I started, I stood there and I started to get really scared, like, oh my gosh, after he did that, and I'm like, where am I? And the next thing you know, this lady kind of like demonically walks to me, she looks at me, she goes, you're in hell. But she said it all weird, like, you're in hell. You know, and she's like, she turned around, she walks away. Then I'm like, like, I'm in hell, you know, you know, like how you feel when you hear those words? Because I just broke down crying. I broke down. Uh, I was like, I didn't understand why the Lord was showing me all these great things, and then, and then show me, and then put me in a situation where I'm thinking I'm in hell, you know. And so I wake up crying, you know, not understanding the dream. I mean, almost for a second, I thought, is this the devil attacking me? Because, because he almost made me not want to put videos up no more. It was just like, well, you know, it's like he's trying to destroy my spirit. But then I think I prayed about it and I was asking questions and I realized what it was. It wasn't hell because it was on the earth. It was tribulation time. And what it was is tribulation, the great tribulation was in full effect. And that's how bad the great tribulation is. It is literally hell on earth. And guys, I was in this environment for a few minutes in my sleep and I'd want to I'd rather die than be at this place that's how scary this place is you do not want to be there if there's any sin at all in your heart that you need to repent of please repent of it if there's any gray like we talk about please get rid of it this is no laughing matter guys and from what I and then when I woke up I started hearing the news isn't it something God gave me this important dream, that, like a dream about hell, right as I look at the news, as the TV, and they're talking about Supreme Court uh, allowing gay marriage throughout the whole country. And this the same night that they do this, that God gives me a dream of hell on earth. And as I go for a walk a few minutes later, you know, I used to hear the train going by once every couple nights. I had about four or five trains going by, trucks going by, ambulances. I think it was World War Three going on. Somehow it's just going for a little walk. I'm like, okay, God, I understand what you're saying. It's like you're the, the alarm bells are ringing, like like hard as they can before the last second, guys. We are in the final seconds. We are definitely in the final seconds. So, yeah. So this dream. Guys, it shook me to my core. I'm not even going to lie. I actually thought I did something wrong and I was in hell. And this wasn't even hell, guys. This was a tribulation. I thought I was in hell. That's how bad it is. You, you do not want to be here. You do not want to be there. If it's that bad for me in dreams, they can all, this felt like it could ruin my life just by having a simple dream. Think about how hard it's going to be actually living through this. You're not going to want to live through it. You're going to want to die. So... Put your houses in order. Repent of your sins. Because tribulation is about to start. Even before I got this, guys, I was thinking 2016. Now I'm thinking even sooner. If it is 2016, it's the beginning. But 2015 to 16, tribulation, I'm 99% sure it's going to start. And from this dream, I feel like the Lord's ready to kick it off. Or whoever's ready to kick it off now. So, this, how our rapture dreams are so imminent. This was a... Uh, Great Tribulation, Eminence Dream. 
that, 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 this is how powerful this was. You know, and I had a dream. I had another dream after, after this, hoping the Lord would give me a good dream. So I went back to sleep. And guess what? I don't. I didn't write it down because I didn't remember most of it. But it was about me and a guy uh, at a school, and he started dating witches and stuff like that. And uh, that I didn't have no. I was poor and had no clothes. I was going to lost and found bags and high, on gar like in dumpsters looking for uh, clothes. Like no, he didn't give me a good dream. He look, gave me another bad dream. So thank God that he has given me a gift of, if, but it's not, this ain't no once saved, always saved stuff. He's given me a gift as long as I live by his commandments, people. If you say you love the Lord, how do you love the Lord? God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And do you guys know what the number one law of heaven is? Obedience. So if you say you love God, but you don't keep his commandments, you do not love God. That's how God says he judges your love. By your uh, by your obedience to him. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say, guys. I just know. I know I'm a sinner. We all are. You know, when you pray at night, debase yourself. Give the Lord your all. Ask him to forgive your sins. Tell him you want to change. Tell him you want to be a new creation in Jesus Christ. Tell him you're so thankful for the atonement. Which is Christ has triumphed over physical and spiritual death. Tell me if there is a place of rest to go to, and yet you like to go. What what do you have to do to be able to make it there? Tell me if there is a rapture. What else would you have to do to be able to make the rapture? Because you want to go. Because believe me, all these people on here with a death wish, trying to do Jesus Jesus's job and wanting to live through the seven years of tribulation, so they can, you know, be some great guys. You, I would. I just had, I had a dream, and you don't want to be there. You wouldn't make it. The scriptures say that the times are so hard in there that it, he, God has to speed it up so much because not, not one man would survive. And believe me, I, was, I wouldn't have survived in this dream and I'm one of the toughest guys that you'll ever meet. Back back in my my rebellious days, I was a cage fighter and everything else. And believe me, I would not want to live in this place at all. This was hell. And believe me, this is the last place you will ever want to go. And think about your children, your family, your friends. Don't you want to be there with them? Don't you want to see their faces? Don't you want to live in happiness? This place is not made for us. We have a better home to go to. I love all of you. And I, I hope you guys can uh, give it to your all here at these final seconds. And pray for us. Pray for me, please. And uh, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.